We are in a series we started last week called Dream On, Dream On. We just watched this little intro here. I wonder if you ever had a motorcycle dream on a bicycle budget before? You know, yeah, I, I sure have. And it's like, man, my, my dreams can far outweigh sometimes what I feel like my, my ability to accomplish it. Um, it's like a story I, I read about a, a husband and a wife and they were walking uh, near their house one day and they found a, uh, a, an oil lamp there on the ground and they picked it up and as soon as they picked it up, lo and behold, a genie popped out of the lamp. They were blown away. They're like, this is just like the movies, and, and, but this can't be real. And the genie's like, nope, it's real. I can make your dreams come true. Uh, the, the catch with this is that um, there's two of you. You each get one dream. You, you tell me what it is and I'll make it happen. Like, really, anything is like, I'll do my best. Anything you ask for. So, and these, this couple was probably about 60 years old. So they're, they're getting up there and the wife's thinking, you know, what, what would I really like to have in my, in my life? And she says, you know what I know? I, what I would like, we've been living in this small house for many, many years and I would like to have a mansion. Is that too much to ask? And the genie says, no, absolutely not. And instantaneously, their small little house was transformed into the house of her dreams. It had everything in it. Everything was neat and orderly. Everything looked good. And then the genie turns to the husband and says, so what would you like? And he looks over at his wife and he says, I would like to be married to a lady that's 30 years younger than me. <laughs> So the genie says, not a problem, poof, and like that, he was 90 years old. So <laughs> sometimes we got to be careful what our dreams are. Got to be careful what you wish for. Have you ever had a dream that was, that was bigger than you? Something that you couldn't accomplish on your own. Has anyone ever had a dream like that before? I think we all have had dreams. But the problem, there's a problem with dreams. And the problem is that all dreams die. You can write this in your notes. Every dream will die before it's fulfilled. Now, doesn't that cheer you up? Welcome to Tr Thrive Church. We want you to make you feel good about yourself. Every dream that you have that's from God will die. Uh, I had the guys shoot a little video. We're going to take a look at this dream that probably should have died anyhow. Number, uh, uh, number one? But yeah, you're up. <laughs> Just messing with you. Flu season, do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is my assistant, Frank. So, Mr. Um, uh, uh, Napolopovsky, is it? Um, what makes you think that you'd be right for this production? Well, um, I... Marvelous, fantastic, great. Now, what will you be singing for us today? Well, something truly beautiful that I'm sure you have never ever seen before in your life. Uh, it's, it's a rendition of... of, of very well known song, and, and maybe my mom helped out a little bit, and we shall see. Okay, a little bit different, but, but go ahead, take it away. I see trees of green. <laughs> but have you ever had a dream that maybe you just, you just couldn't achieve it no matter how hard you tried? But see, every dream that comes from God 
will die. You look at scripture and, and it's very evident. We look at the life of Abraham and, and God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and he couldn't even get his wife pregnant so they could have a single child. They, they went through this long period where the dream seemed like it was, it was dead. Take David, for example. The prophet Samuel came to David and said, you are gonna be the next king over Israel. Your days of, of watching sheep are numbered. And guess what happened to David? He went from being the sheep guy to the pizza delivery guy. Because dad said, hey, go bring some bread and cheese to your brothers on the front line. And that sounds like pizza to me. 22 years, it went from David being given this vision of being king over Israel to the time he actually was Jesus, he came as our Messiah, and guess what happens? Shortly thereafter, he gets crucified on the cross. It seems like the, the dream is now dead. It, it, it's like grapes. I don't know if you guys like grapes. I, I, I love grapes. Grapes are, are great. In fact, we got some wild grapes that are growing out in the back here. I'm gonna try one of these. I'm sorry I don't have enough to share. Um, Give me a minute, or I'll be spitting more than normal. Um, the problem with grapes is they say that on average, from the time you plant it, it's a minimum of three years before you're ever gonna produce a grape. So, so, so you, you plant these things and you want some grapes and, and you don't have any. You wanna make some wine and all you have is a bunch of vines sitting around. And, and, and the dream that you have seems like it's dead. It's not producing any fruit. And God has often given us dreams, but then the dream dies and then we can get, we can get upset, we can get jaded, we can get frustrated saying, God, why did you give me this dream only to allow it to die? Moses in the Bible, we talked about him a little bit last week and, and how he saw someone, uh, an Egyptian, abusing an Israelite. He got mad. He took matters into his own hands. He killed this Egyptian. And then he flees to Midian. And then from there, he spends time in the wilderness, as it says in Exodus 2.15. It says, and sure enough, Pharaoh heard what had happened and he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went in the land of Midian. Scripture tells us that he lived there for 40 years before he ever came back to work on fulfilling the vision. And that was only part of the dream that God had given him. The, the, the true dream was for, for Moses to lead the, the people of Israel into the promised land. And that wouldn't happen for even many years further than that. But in your notes, jot this down. That the dream gives us the motivation to go through the wilderness. See, there's a wilderness that you may have to go through in your life. There's a hardship that you may have to go through in your life, but it's a dream that God gives us that gives us the motivation to go through this wilderness that sets before us. See, the wilderness is not there to punish us, it's there to educate us. Because as Moses is out there in the wilderness, he's learning things. He's learning responsibility. He's learning how to communicate with God. Last week, we also spoke of Joseph. Joseph is the dreamer. We hear a lot about his dreams that he has. And, and we talked about how he, was a, how he was a tattletale. He was boastful. He was kind of a jerk to his, his brothers. Man, he was doing all kinds of things. He'd get these crazy dreams about his brothers bowing down to him. And the first thing he did was go and tell his brothers. And I don't know if you have a, a little brother, but them coming and telling you, you're going to bow down to me one day, probably won't go over very well. And it didn't go over very well here. The problem was, was that Joseph had this dream. What he didn't realize is that it was an incomplete dream. He saw the destination, but he didn't see the journey. He saw this, this image of his brothers bowing down to him, but he didn't see what he would have to go through to get there. And in Genesis 37, verse 18, it says, when Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. 
probably because this flashy rainbow coat that he was wearing. They say, oh, that's Joseph. No one else is dressing like that around here. We certainly aren't, because that's dad's favorite. And as they approached, they made plans. This is how loving this family was. They made plans to kill him. I don't know how dysfunctional your family is, but probably not quite this bad, okay? They're making plans to kill him. They're like, here comes that dreamer. I don't think they were saying that positive, like, oh, here comes the dreamer. Let's see what he dreamed last night. No, here comes a dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns, one of these pits right over here. Then we can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. Man, and you thought your brothers didn't love you. I mean, th 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 this, these guys are just malicious. They wanna kill him, throw him in there, lie to dad, and just be done with this dreamer. They did have a change of heart, fortunately. They thought about it for a few moments, and, and Reuben stepped in and said, you know what, maybe we shouldn't kill him and throw him in. Why don't we just throw him in there and, and let him starve to death or something like that? Well, Reuben actually had plans. He would come back there late at night and, and he would help him out. Well, anyhow, they said, yeah, that's great. We'll throw him in there and let him starve. So they threw him in there. And, uh, and then after that, they see a group of traitors coming by. And it says here in Genesis 37, Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. So, so here's Joseph. He's down in the bottom of the pit. His dreams are now crushed. He thinks he's gonna die. And, and in fact, not only are his dreams crushed, Think about it. It was his dreams that got him in the me this mess to begin with. It was his dreams. It was because he was having these fantastic dreams that got him in this mess. And, and Judah's saying, we have to cover up this crime. He said, instead of hurting him, let's sell him to the Ishmaelite traitors. After all, he's our brother. I mean, if that doesn't just warm your heart, I don't know what does. Let's not kill him. Let's sell him into slavery. After all, he's our brother. He's our own flesh and blood. Let's do the right thing, boys. And, and so they all, they, they all, says all the brothers agreed. They're like, yeah, let, let's just sell him into slavery. So when the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern, out of this pit, and they sold him for 20 pieces of silver. I don't know how much that's worth, but it doesn't sound like a lot to me. And the traders then took him to Egypt. Where's your dream now, Joseph? Where's this great dream? I mean, in his mind, this must have been going in the opposite direction. He had a dream of people bowing down to him, and now he's a slave being forced to bow down to other people. He, he had a, a dream of being able to command people and tell them where to go and what to do, and now he's in that situation where he's being commanded and told what to do. In your notes, jot this down, that sometimes... The circumstances in your life will be in direct conflict with your dream. Have you ever noticed that before? You, God's given you a dream to do a certain thing, and then the circumstances in your life just go the wrong way. They just go the opposite way. And that's what's happening here. Joseph has a dream that he's gonna be a leader and a ruler and life has just turned everything around. He's going in the opposite direction, the absolute wrong way to go. But the thing that Joseph may not have realized is that, that we'll never reach the dream that God has called us to until we go through the valley. If we're sitting here and we see this, this mountain peak, this summit off in the distance saying, that's where the dream is. You'll never get there until you go through the valley, until you go through the wilderness. Thomas Edison famously invented the light bulb. And a news reporter came up to him and asked him in a sarcastic way, so what does it feel like to have failed 2,000 times and inventing the light bulb. And Edison looked at, back at him and he says, I never failed once. 
I invented the light bulb. It just happened to be a 2,000 step process. See, sometimes the process is longer than we think. And what he did is he learned through that process. In fact, I've heard that he came up with several other inventions throughout that because he was learning different things. He was learning what didn't work. And so here's Joseph. They threatened to kill him. They threw him in a pit, left him to die. They had a change of heart. They pulled him out and they sold him into slavery. Joseph must have been devastated. How is his dream ever going to happen now? But in your notes, write this down. That what Joseph thought was tragic became his ticket to Egypt. He probably would have never ended up in Egypt otherwise. But what he thought was so tragic became the transportation for him to go into Egypt. It became the education that he needed to be the man that God wanted him to be. So here he is, he's transported into Egypt and he's sold to a man named Potiphar. This is captain of the palace guard. I mean, he works directly for the king. This guy is important. I, and Joseph must have wanted to say, hey, maybe this is my edge in. I'm working for this, this really powerful man. I've, I finally made it to the palace. Not exactly how he hoped to. He didn't hope to be a slave, but he was at the palace nonetheless. In Genesis 39, verse two, it says, the Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. What does that say to me? That says, Joseph did not allow the situations and circumstances in his life to get him down. He could have said, well, I had a dream and it's never going to happen, so oh, woe is me. No, he applied himself. He said, well, if I'm going to be a slave, I'm going to be the best slave I possibly can. And it says, and God blessed him, and he succeeded in everything he did. Verse 6 says, so Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a single thing except what kind of food to eat. So here's Joseph learning administrative skills. He's learning all these things. What could have been, been devastating for him, he decided to turn it around and learn from it, to move forward. He decided to pick up some skills while he was there. See, sometimes God allows the dream to die in our life so that we can be shaped into the person God wants us to be. I wonder, in your life, when you've gone through difficult times, when dreams have died, when relationships have failed, when, when it seems like you're going through the wilderness, I wonder if you reflect back, what did you learn from those experiences? And oftentimes we learn more from those experiences than when everything is smooth sailing in our life. So God allowed the dream to die in Joseph so that God could make him into the person that he wanted him to be. But see, Joseph needed a change of heart. He needed a change of heart before he could move forward. See, God is always a step ahead of us, even, even if we feel like he's a step behind. Have you ever felt like God is a step behind before? God, why are you letting this happen? Why can't you just keep up with this? Why, why can't I move forward? God, why, are you, why, why aren't you directing my path? God is always a step ahead of us. And don't let the circumstances in your life change the dream that God put in your heart. Because even when Joseph was going through all of these things, there was still a dream there. But Joseph's problems were not over yet. His problems weren't over. You know why? Because he was good looking. So what is, anybody in here good looking? Yeah. You guys all are really good looking to me right now. Joseph was good looking, and some of you are cursed with this as well. It says here in Genesis 29, verse 6, it says, Joseph was very handsome and well-built young man. You know, I suffer from this also, you know. <laughs> what, what can I say? <laughs> no, don't, don't think that I'm serious there, please. Um, anyhow, it says, Joseph was very handsome and well-built young man, and Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. 
Come sleep with me, she demanded, but Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held nothing back from me except you, of course, because you're his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day after day after day, but he refused to sleep with her. And he kept out of her way as much as possible. One day, however, no one else was around when he went in to do his work. And she came and grabbed him by his cloak, demanding, come on, sleep with me. And Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand as he ran from the house. Some of you might know what happened next. See, Joseph was working hard to resist the temptation He was in the situation where he was being tempted daily, but he kept resisting it, resisting it, and then he runs away, he resists it, and she ends up with his his cloak in her hand. See, following your dream will require integrity. If you wanna follow the dream that God has put in you, it might cause you, you might have to resist some things. You might have to have a little bit of integrity in your life like Joseph had. He said, I'm not gonna compromise what I believe. I'm not gonna sin. Some of us would have said, well, hey, God, God let all this bad stuff happen to me, so hey, I'm gonna do whatever I want. I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. Who's gonna know? But not Joseph. He had integrity. He ran. See, God was developing Joseph's character. But guess what? It got worse. Potiphar's wife has his cloak, yells out, starts screaming, he tried to rape me, he tried to rape me. Potiphar came, he was furious, throws him into prison. So now here is Joseph, now he's in prison, and he spends 13 years from the time he's thrown into the pit and goes through his whole term in prison, he spends 13 years. But he learned some stuff. Working for Potiphar, now he's in the prison before long, the, 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 the prison keeper turned over the entire prison to him. He became in charge of the prison. He was there, he was doing everything. And Joseph kept applying himself, moving forward, learning what he could learn. Jot this in your notes, that Joseph had dreams of a palace, but first he had to go through the pit and the prison. And I wonder in our lives, if we have these dreams of this palace, but yet we're in the pit right now. We're in the prison right now. We're in slavery right now, saying, God, this, this just does not make sense. How are you gonna get me from point A to point B? How are you gonna do this? My, 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 brothers, my brothers hate me. They did this to me. They, they were jealous. They were disapproval. Maybe in your family you have a dream. People are saying, no, you can't do that dream. You gotta just do this. Friends, family members, other people say, no, there's no way you can do this. Don't let someone else's disapproval or jealousy hinder you from dreaming. But when the dream dies, you might start doubting the dream. I bet it was easy for Joseph to say to himself, you know, this is never gonna happen. I almost thought it was gonna happen because, because I, was, I was getting really uh, close to Potiphar. I was like the leader of his house. Maybe that would open up a door for me in the palace. Maybe God is working this out after all. And then next thing he knows, he ends up in even a worse situation. A slave in a prison. But in your notes, jot this down. Don't doubt the dream when it dies. Don't doubt the dream when it dies. Because you might be going through it, and even though it dies, it doesn't mean that it's invalid. Like when you plant a seed in the ground, that seed has to go through a transformative process where the seed itself has to die in order to bring forth the life of the new plant and therefore the fruit or the vegetables that you're trying to grow. God gave Joseph a dream, but that dream was only the seed of a dream and it had to go through the dying process. And it says in Galatians chapter six, verse nine, he says, so let's not get tired of doing what's good. I wonder, do you ever get tired of doing what's good? Man, I just don't think I can do this anymore. I don't think I can be good anymore. I don't think I can have integrity anymore. My boss is pressuring me to do this. My friends are pressuring me to do these things. 
My teachers pressure me to do these things. My friends, everybody's pushing me, pushing me. And I, I'm just getting tired of doing what's good. It says, don't get tired of doing what's good because at just the right time, when? At just the right time, underline those words. At just the right time, when is the right time? I don't know. And you don't know, but God knows. At just the right time, the time when he says, now is the right time. At just the right time, he might not give you a heads up. You might be in the middle of a prison. You might be in a pit. And he's like, okay, now is the right time. Now is the right time. You, you've spent enough time in the pit and in the prison as a slave. You've learned the things that I want you to learn. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. How? If we don't give up. If we don't give up, but are we giving up on the dream that God has put in us? The dream that maybe we're gonna share our faith with people, the dream that we're gonna make a difference for God in this world, the dream that we're gonna teach, we're gonna uh, influence lives, the dream that we're gonna help those that are hurting, the dream that God has put in you. Are we getting tired? Are we tempted to give up? But it says that at just the right time, you'll reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. It's easy to give up on the dream. It's easy, but we need to face the giants that come at us. This past week, I've been reading a story about a man in the Bible named Caleb. And for those of you that might not know Caleb, Caleb was, was a spy and, and Moses sent Caleb and Joshua and, and 10 other spies into the promised land and said, go scope it out. And they came back and Joseph and Caleb said, yeah, we got this, we got this. And the other 10 spies said, no, there's giants in that land. There's giants that we can't go in there and defeat them. We're like grasshoppers. And Joshua and Caleb said, no, we got this. They're giants, but you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I think that's where the quote came from. And, and so there's giants there, but because of the doubt of the 10, the Israelites started wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And 40 years later, after everyone else had died off and those other 10 spies had died off, Joshua and Caleb alone were left to go into the promised land with the Israelites. And as they're there, they're going in, they're conquering kingdoms, they're claiming land, they're doing what God wants them to do. And then Joshua, 85 years old Joshua, I'm sorry, Caleb, 85 year old Caleb comes up and says, Hey, Joshua, remember when we were spies in the land and there was a giants over there? Joshua's like, yeah. Caleb's like, I still feel good. I'm 85 years old, but I still feel like I can fight like a 40 year old. Give me that, give me those giants. I'm going in after the giants. And Joshua's like, if you want them, you can have them. And Caleb goes in there and scripture says he went in and they conquered that land. Caleb had the faith. He had the dream. The dream was on delay for 45 years. And here he's going in as an old man, but with the courage and the strength of a young man. And he accomplishes what God has because he was not afraid to face the giants in his life. We need to face the obstacles head on that are coming at us. Don't throw in the towel. We want the grapes and all we have is the vines. But we gotta realize that a lot of the dreams, they die in the soil. But just because it dies in the soil doesn't mean that the new life, the new growth isn't gonna come. In your notes, jot this down, that when life is in the pits, see what you can pick up. You know, I notice this as I get older. If I'm down tying my shoes, I look around and say, is there anything I can pick up while I'm down here? I don't want to have to bend over too much. If you fall down, you say, I'm just at the bottom. I'm just, I hit rock bottom. Well, then see what you can pick up while you're at rock bottom. See what you can learn while you're there. Learn something, grow, because God is working it together. You know, if God has given you a dream, but you haven't experienced the fulfillment yet, it's because it's not in God's timing yet. He says at just the right time, at just the right time, you'll reap this harvest of blessing if you don't give up. Maybe you're not ready for it. Maybe you haven't learned what you needed to learn. Maybe your character hasn't been shaped enough yet. Maybe the integrity issue is not there yet. Maybe you're not trusting God yet. But even if your dream is big, even if your dream is from God, there's gonna be opposition. But stay the course. God wants you to dream big. Why? Because he's a big God and he wants to do big things in your life. 